cup of tea, sir. What's up gang? I'm really tired but really excited to do this video today. Every single month since the very first video we've uploaded to this channel, which was exactly one year ago by the way. 1st of March, the year 2016, our very first video. Congrats to us on doing it for whole year. Ace, let's drink to that. So every month I feel slightly guilty for leaving behind some of the great albums which we didn't have a chance to review really. To just schedule or other problems. You gotta understand, we can't review every single release we want to do because we simply wouldn't have time for that. So we have to skip some of the records and just kind of leave them behind. From now on, we'll be doing a special seasonal video where we'll include those LPs and EPs we didn't have time to review, the ones we loved and enjoyed and the ones that didn't really impress us that much. All the other great pre-winter records, that obviously millions of them. Well, we might choose some of our favourites and maybe we'll review them one day in some sort of special our favourite albums review or something like that. But not now. We have lots of shit coming up, so we'll see. But now everything that got our attention, all the releases from December 1st, 2016 till February 28th, 2017. First album I want to talk about a bit here today is a heraldic black cherry by an American indie tronica duo Sun Airway. It's their third full length um, and I missed those kind of thought through structured pieces and pumping dense bits like this one has. Heraldic Black Cherry flew away a little bit from Sun's psychedelic roots, but instead provided some experimentation, some braver lyrical approach, and overall really good vibes. I really like this album and really enjoyed listening to it. All the tracks pierced through with this incredible interludes. It's really chill, wavy, relaxing, easy to get into. Great work! Next album just came out, but we don't really have time to do a whole another video dedicated just for this. So yeah, we, we decided to include it here. I'm talking about New Dirty Projector's self-titled record. It's more accurate to call it a solo music project now from David Longstrand of the band. To be honest, I never really was interested that much in previous Dirty Projector's releases, but this one, this album, such a fantastic work. It's a painful breakup surviving dance guide or something. For me, definitely Dirty Projector's career highlight. This album, it keeps surprising you with each and every track. Then we have another Ty Segal records. He is back with yet another great album release. Man, it feels right. He's so good at making music. It's a self-titled, sometimes garage noise psych, sometimes more vulnerable, heartbreaking 10 tracks where Ty brilliantly showcases his talents. You can clearly notice some influences spots here and there, but overall he still managed to create his own record. Like, there's no doubt that this is a Ty Segal record from listening to like first minute of the track. Really liked brand new surf cursed record called Nothing Yet. This is a band from Nevada, I think it's their debut full length, I might be wrong, maybe, maybe it is. It's available through Bandcamp and streaming if you wanna give it a go, do it. Perhaps some might find it a bit forgettable and you know it's hard for me to choose one with like two, three particular tracks from this album, but together, album in its entirety, with all its inconsistency, with all its low fineness and with its beautiful guitars, it's an amazing surf rock indie pop record. It sets a good mood, it has some punkish attitude to it, which I always appreciate. Yeah man, I just really enjoyed this album. Coming back to last guitar-based releases, we have another throwing snow record. Ross Tone's IDM solo project. His new record is called Embers and it's fantastic. There are 14 tracks on this which built such a huge, endless, North Pole picturesque visions with piercing shiver and snow and coldness and then sometimes appearing sun warmth, all the weather changes, fear, happiness, love, anxiety, extreme, dance party, you know, they're all 
kinds of different emotions there on the record. And I mostly live for all of those twists. I like how the album flows without any pauses. I like the more brighter beats here and there. But also you can really get caught in this is more nostalgic ambient vibe. It's a beautifully done work. Austra, or is it Austra? Canadian mystical electronic music project led by the incredible Katie Stalman. He's released their third full-length album called Future Politics this past January and I'm loving the hell out of this record. Probably my favorite record from them so far. It definitely has more colors to it. By the way, I love all the visual support for this release, all the shoots, all the artwork, all the videos. Everything looks just beautiful. And this record, it makes you tired of dancing to it. Plus, all the heavy yet lightweight political statements and political utopian views. I kind of like this side of political music. It's at its happier place. Yet still makes you woke, I guess. Anyway, love this release. Amazing album, Future Politics. Listen to it. I love when musicians keep their promises, and uh, Australian psychedelic rock, psychedelic pop rock, mostly rock um, music collective, King Gizzard and the Lizard Wizard, they promise to release a bunch of albums this year and uh, just keep surprising fans with their new music, which is, you know, always good, especially if you have something interesting and innovative, at least a little bit, to your sound. Their new record, flying microtonal banana while having kind of the same classic gizzard sound with its crunchy fuzz noising it also has a slightly different instrumental approach they actually customized some of the instruments and did something with tuning i think and they also played with some experimentation there's some exotic additions some complex layering all that created a very special psych veil which gets you high pretty quick and you're ready to get lost to the music. Swedish heartthrob Jens Lekman is back y'all. His new LP called Life Will See You Now came out like a week ago or something and well this is probably his poppiest release so far. I personally like the slightly more experimental parts especially when the cutesy lovely tracks suddenly break into this weird samples and also like some of the lyrical stuff here overall it's a very happy music album sometimes a bit nostalgic some of those tracks have this almost christmas miracle vibe to them so if you're in a bad mood this either will make you sick or cheer you up there's a new exciting indie pop indie rock brit pop band from Denmark, originally coming from the already legendary local label Posh Isolation, a band called Communions, this winter they released their full-length debut record called Blue, and well, I was surprised because they went strong pop back in the day on their earlier material. They were much more Danish scene classy, with darker, noisier post-punk music, but Blue actually proves that they're pretty good as a pop band. Though still, in some of those guitars and moodier tracks, you can catch everything you liked from their earlier stuff. Lots of debut records in the list. LA-based indie pop since pop trio, Moona, released their first album in the beginning of last month. It's called About You and it's a pretty special work from a pretty special band. Musically, it has a beautiful spectrum of danceable madness and love and longing and yeah musically it's very nice it's just nice lyrically it challenges you to change the world and compels you to actually listen overall Moona seems like a perfect pop band in the world of music of 2017 and in a lot of ways in america of 2017 all hail moona and we're really looking forward to hear more from them not all the albums impressed us as much there were some releases that we were really interested in checking out due to artist fame previous works a lot of hype and in the result some of it was just really blank and you know just for a one-time listen maybe that's the problem maybe if we would you know continue to listen it we might get into it eventually first bonobos migration it's not that bad but it doesn't sound exciting 
or new, more like something Bonobo was doing back in 2010 or 2012. It could work as a soundtrack to some sort of art house film though. Foxy Gent's Hang album failed to create an epic spectacle of music talents. Instead, it sounded like an over-dramatized stage, bad stage performance. It some of your local acting club. Was excited for brand new Cloud Nothings, yet the brand new Life Without Sound, as depressing as its title, presented yet another cemented indie rock where none of the track really stood out. Band, um, they seemed like a new catfish in the bottleman to me. The debut flopped, kind of. A lot of people hated it. Yeah, I don't know, they have good guitar riffs and a lot of stuff to say. And they have charisma, but their album, Dump Blood, it stucks you up with this rarely memorable tracks. We just hope and pray that they will change this on their sophomore release. You can do it, I believe in you. Flaming Lips' latest release Seems seems like some old band took their instruments and re listened to their discography and did this. None of it really worked out. We didn't really get all the hype around brand new Japan droids. Near to the Wild Heart of Life album. It it sounds neither wild, neither full of life. It's just kind of boring. And very last decade. Does anyone really need this kind of music in 2017? That's not all the lyrics we didn't like, but anyway, we do encourage you to listen to them. And if you like it, come back and bash us about it in the comments down below. You have a chance. Prove that those releases are fucking great. Do it. We challenge you. But yeah, besides all that, there's so much more releases that came out and we unfortunately are not able to talk about all of them. But yeah, I'm gonna just list some albums that we've enjoyed quite a bit and think that you should listen to them as well. Unexpected polished studio work from Cherry Glazer at its third release with a great title, Apocalyptic. Third album as well by the Orwells, Terrible Human Beings. Not really that liked by some people apparently, but we thought it was decent and we are absolutely in love with the Black Francis track. It's great. So yeah. Panic Solo released their Zilla studio album second, their sophomore work. It really feels like they're developing their sound making skills and yeah, it feels good. It has some good bangers on this record, so listen to that. Pink Season by Pink Guy, one of the best humor based music albums in my entire fucking life. I honestly live for tracks like Dora's Explorer. Bring fucking killed it. Awesome. Really loved what kind of dystopian hellhole is this by the underground youth. First of all, love the title. And then, well, the underground youth, they're legends. It's their eighth release and arguably their best so far. They do this dream pop version of post punk shoegaze goth mixed with chill wave and psychedelic something. Um, very Berlin of them. Another post punk record for you to enjoy. Fu Fa Nu with Sports, which seemed like a whole conceptual album to me, has some great tunes. More Fast Club releases, has a shadow band with their Sorrow Tomorrow. Love that record a lot. It's daring, it's noisy, it sounds really good. Probably you've already listened to this record, but anyway. Thundercat, listen to that. If you're missed on some grime, there were biggest releases of this year, Stormzy and Wiley. Both released their new LPs. Highly recommend you to check out that. If you like grime, you probably already listened to that a lot of times. A lot of great electronic releases. Listen to Hippocampus Landmark. Kingdom's Tears in the Club has some great features on it. And few EPs. Bo Rushes. Is it Bo Russia? Bore Rushes, Kinda Love, Shock Horror by Shy Love, Smurfs OK and Big Wilds Invincible. And finally, there's a brand new young boy with a guitar, sometimes heavily reminding everyone of Archie Marshall, King Cruel. Check out Cosmo Pike's WEP Just Cosmo. That'd be it for this video. All the winter releases we've enjoyed. I struggled real hard deleting about 50% more. But yeah, I guess those ones are the most important ones for us. These are all, of course, without the albums we've done a review on. Don't forget to watch all of them, by the way. If we forgot to mention some other release that you've really, really liked, share it in the comments down below. We'd love 
to hear your music picks. Also don't forget to like and to share this video. Make us a first year happy birthday gift by subscribing to our channel and checking out all of our other videos. All the love. We're already super excited for spring releases to come. There's going to be some great, great albums. Now you yourself have plenty of music to listen to. I hope you will listen to it. There's some amazing stuff. And yeah, that's all I wanted to share with you today. It's going to be a long video to edit. Bye-bye. Peace off.